Hi, here we are. This is episode eight of Live at Epifan. I'm George Birchall. This is Dan Wallace. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we did a show in here on lighting, and so we're going to do a follow-up show. Dan's going to dig in, get really nerdy about some very specifics around lighting and how to measure them. Uh, before we get into that, there's a couple of little things. Um, you might notice the picture looks a little different this week, and that's because we have a new camera in the studio. We have a Canon C100, and uh, we expect the picture to look significantly nicer with this cam with this camera. So let us know what you think. Uh, I, I think it's definitely looking a little more crisp, a little more detail. Um, we might want to work on the picture style on the Canon, get a little bit yeah, more yeah, contrast yeah, yeah, yeah. in there. But and I'm, it should. It, it, this is a $5,000 camera versus a $500 yeah. camera, so uh, expectation yeah. is that it should look a lot nicer. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, yeah, send us any comments during the show, and uh, if you have any questions about what Dan's talking about with the lighting, we'd be happy to hear about it. So, um, yeah. We'll dive right in? Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Okay, so the topic for today, we wanted to talk about LED lights. And uh, just to sort of give a little bit of background, LED lights have become very popular Everywhere. Uh, for mm -hmm. video especially in the last 10 years or so. They've grown in popularity. They've also come down in price a lot, which has made them one of the more accessible types of lighting that video people are using. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the pros and cons, some of the drawbacks, but also talk about how you can really get the most out of your inexpensive and affordable LED yes. lights. Yep. So we have a couple examples here. I mean, this is pretty typical. This is the one that we just got. Yeah, yeah. Nice, uh, yeah. We can make it go. We'll blind everybody. Yeah. There. This is a really nice camera mounted light and one of the things that's great about these camera mounted lights is they're obviously they're very light, they're very portable, uh, they can don't require a large power draw so you can run them on a battery. Also uh, one of the things that I've always enjoyed about these is that you can fit them into really tiny yes. locations so mm -hmm. when you're shooting maybe in a car or some mm -hmm. smaller area it's easy to get one of these where you need it. Um, but there are some drawbacks, so I don't know if how familiar you are, George. Have you shot with LED lights? Well, I've shot with this one, and uh, it does do two things that are great, and that it does, uh, I can adjust the brightness right on it, like that. Why don't you show this camera right here? Sure. Um, I can turn it around for you. Yeah, I can adjust the brightness, and then, but then, what we're going to dig into today is color temperature. I can also adjust color temperature with it to some degree. That's right. So this uh, goes all the way up to 5600 Kelvin, which yes. is going to match nicely with outdoor light, sunlight, mm -hmm. all the way down to 3200 Kelvin color temperature, which is perfect for matching up to your incandescent bulbs. So if you have, you know, pretty standard room lighting with incandescent yeah. light bulbs, it's going to match up sure. with that really nicely and provide a nice even color. Um, but there are some other drawbacks, and I've seen this a number of times shooting with LEDs. One of the most common knocks on them is that, uh, especially with the less expensive LEDs, is that they tend to have what's known as a green cast. Yes. Uh, right. So, have you seen The Matrix? Of course. So, I, I've got a picture here. So, um, yeah, kind of like this. Then you see when they're in The Matrix. This is their first LED light? Is that what happened? Yes, they used LED lighting when they shot this. I think that's why. No, but seriously though, like everything kind of has a green tint to it. Mm -hmm. I'll pull up another example. Um, well, why don't we just jump right into this example? Here's, here's a, here's a an interview that I shot a while back, and this was actually shot with incandescent lighting. We used a yes. three-point lighting setup. You see, it looks pretty good. You've also got a natural light there as well. We've got some natural light, so we actually you matched our incandescent bulbs with like a blue gel mm -hmm. to match it to a, um, a high color temperature, like a 5500 Kelvin. Um, I'm going to give you another example now. Exact same room, exact same camera, similar lighting conditions, except uh, we used LED bulbs for this. And you see here, with as compared to with this gentleman, uh, looking skin tones, looking nice and peachy, yeah, yeah, looking yeah. warm mm -hmm. and, and, and nice. Here with the LED bulbs, you can see everything kind of looks like the matrix. It kind of yeah, has yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that green tint. It looks green. Um, so, and, and, you know, in post, I can correct for this, and you see I've got a, a, a vector scope up here that we can measure skin tones with, with. We won't obviously get into that too much today. That, that could be a great topic for another episode, but, you know, I can correct for this, and you see the difference I'm, as I pull across here. I've sort of got it halfway. On the left, you see right out of the camera with the LED lights. Yes. And on the right side, I've corrected for it. And you're correcting just by adjusting uh, the color in post to another layer, right? Okay. Exactly. So I'm actually just using Lumetri 
right in Premiere, and I'm okay. actually taking the tint into the magenta. Got it. Okay. Uh, pulling it out of green and into magenta. So, so, you know, we mostly talk about live situations on this show. So, how do you correct it in a live environment when well, you have a we'll green see. LED light? Well, you see, that's a great question is, you know, obviously when you're shooting something recorded and you're going to be taking it into post, you're not as worried about how your lights look yeah. because you can always kind of fix it in post. Mm -hmm. When you're live, obviously, what goes into the camera, what the camera sees is probably what's going out to the world. So you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of the lights that you do have. So uh, to do that, um, we've actually prepared, well, we should probably talk a little bit about the characteristics of LED lights a little sure. bit first. So I'll pull up a, an image here. Um, here's a good example, actually, of some, some different light spectrums. Okay. So you see we've got daylight, which has um, a very even spectrum across all wavelengths of color. We've got with incandescent here, obviously it's favoring the, uh, the warmer tones, the reds and the oranges, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a very linear graph of light, as you can see. Now, the problem that we run into when we use LEDs, and you can see it here with the cool white LED and with the warm LED, actually, is that uh, your, your warmer colors, your red wavelengths, are actually underrepresented quite a bit. So what happens is when you brighten that light up, you actually, the, the blues and the greens, and oftentimes the greens actually are much brighter. They dominate? They dominate the frame. Now, will you see it? Because when I turn on this, I don't see that. So it's not visible to the, to the human eye at a glance, or, or is it if you, look, if you are sensitive enough to? You, you probably won't be able to see it. Right. Um, your camera will see it. So how do you know if it's green or like? That's a great question. So, you know, how we measure um, the quality of light is using a scale called CRI, okay. and that's a color rendering index. So CRI is actually a scientific way of measuring the quality of light and measuring how much a light is able to represent the, the true colors of an object or of a person. Okay. Gotcha. Um, now, obviously we're not capable of doing the scientific test. We don't have the equipment or the laboratory equipment to do it, but there are some crude simple tests yes. that you can do to actually understand if your light has a bias towards perhaps a green tones mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. magenta tones. So uh, we actually did a little test yeah, here I, in the studio. I saw you in here with your <laughs> ha hacking it together. So. Yeah, so why don't I pull up this test? So I'm just going to open up Photoshop here. So if you look at Photoshop here, I've got, I just took a, uh, a white foam core and yes. set it up on the desk and I set Actually, this first photo is actually with the LED panel light that you were just holding here. Mm -hmm. So, what this we this is like a, you know, two hundred dollar. Yeah, this is this right? is a reasonably affordable light. I think it's a great. But there are really really cheap ones. So, like, like you can get twenty dollar LED Ex panels. Exactly, and you know, okay. for a lot of people who maybe don't have a huge budget, who are trying to do things on the affordable side, yeah. you know, you going on eBay, going on Amazon, finding those under one hundred dollar LED lights is a great starting point. And what you can do is do a test similar to this. To, so okay. at least you can understand if your light has a bias, if it has you know, a bias in one direction or another in right. terms of the, the color spectrum output. So here's how you test it. You take a, uh, you could use a white wall even. I took a white piece of foam core. You want to make sure that it's pure white. Yes. Um, and then we set the light to 5600 Kelvin because in this case our light is, you know, adjustable color temperature. So right. we set the light to 5600 Kelvin. We set a DSL ca DSLR camera to 5600 Kelvin mm -hmm. as well, and we just photograph the white um, foam core. Right. So okay. it looks completely flat white. Exactly. And you see here with the photo, I mean, it looks pretty good, mm -hmm. right? Um, but what we can do is if we go over here and actually dial up the saturation, and I'm going to slowly drag this slider up, okay, you can start to see, and when I bring the lightness down. Cool. It's red. Yeah, so you can actually see that this light actually, surprisingly, I thought it might have a green bias like many LEDs, but this one actually has a slight... You showed us the graph and everything was spiking in reds and blues. How come this is clearly red biased? Well, I think that, you know, a lot of LED manufacturers started to recognize that LED bulbs were having a green color bias, so mm -hmm. they've, they've corrected for that in the fact they've tried to calibrate it. They've overcorrected? Exactly. Maybe they've overcorrected a little bit. Okay. Um, if, if a light is going to have a bias, it's better that it have a magenta bias, I would say. It's going to look better on people's skin than a green bias. So in this case, this light does have a slight magenta bias. Okay. 
let's take a look at another light. Um, actually, this light here, we borrowed from someone in the office, and it actually... It's a it's panel, right? Yeah, really nice. This is still a relatively affordable panel from Came TV. Mm -hmm. um, there you go, open her up. You can run this off a battery or plug it in. Really bright, really nice solid light. Um, so we set it again to 5600 Kelvin, matched our camera settings, and here's the photograph. So let's take a look at the photo. And you see as I crank up this saturation slider, the white stays pretty white. Um, I'll bring down the lightness a bit. And you see it does have like a slight magenta bias. Yeah, yeah, but, but not much compared to the other one. But not, not as much as the other one. Here, we'll pass that back, thank you. Thanks. Um, I'll just show one more example. We have our studio softbox for our fill light over here. So that's not LED, those are? So, yeah, uh, this is not an LED light. Fluorescent light bulbs, right? Correct, I believe these are CFL. Oh yeah, yeah, CFL. CFL bulbs, right? Okay. So when we crank up the saturation on this CFL softbox, you can see. Oh, it's Tiger Cat yellow. <laughs> yeah. So this one actually has a yellow bias, which is really interesting. Yeah. So again, this is just an easy test that you can perform um, using things that using the lights that you do have, um, just to get an idea and a sense. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Uh, if it has yeah. a color bias in one direction or mm -hmm. another. So I guess the next question is, hey, I've recognized that maybe my light has a green shift or a magenta shift. What can you do about that, right? So I don't know, George. If you do, you have any ideas? Oh, I don't know, Dan. <laughs> Um, could it have something to do with these filters that we've been sitting on here? Indeed it does. So, I mean, you've okay. seen these before, right? Yes, I don't know how, well, I use them to actually add color to, to the reason I bought, I bought this kit of uh, lighting filters, and I wanted to add splashes of blue and yellow and green to background shots. Yeah, what sure. You, what is it that we're going to do, because you're going to try to correct color with them, is that right? Exactly, and, and that's a great, I mean, that's what most people recognize gels for, so maybe you're, you want to add color to a light. Mm -hmm gels is how to, how you do that but there's another way to think of it too and that's to, to, to correct the imperfections in an LED light right. so in cases say where you do have that that sort of green tinge mm -hmm. what you can do is you can look for what's called a minus green gel right okay and uh, a minus green gel is actually a, a very uh, similar to this but it's a very um, opaque uh, slightly magenta mm -hmm. hue so you put that right over your LED, you clip it on with tape or with uh, you know, a clothespin, and you just put it in front of your light. And the light at first glance might not actually look all that different mm -hmm. when you're using it, yes. but the camera will see it differently. And okay. what it's gonna do is it's these, these light spectrums you know, that we were looking at before on the, on the screen, it's gonna correct for those imbalances. So it's very difficult to correct for spikes. Yes. Um, but because you need a filter for each, exactly. Color for each filter. So what I would suggest is actually, you know, try out some gels and then perform the same test that we just showed in Photoshop. So right. you know, take your gel, uh, take your light without any gels on it, put it into Photoshop, take a picture of something white, mm -hmm. and then try putting a gel in front of it and see what the difference is. So and these the, these gels have crazy amount of color in them. Right? Yeah, exactly. And 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 typically you wouldn't want to be using something this opaque and this colorful. Right. Um, but actually, you know, what you can do, George, is look, just go to um, the Lee Filters website. This is a great website. Uh, it's got all so of- So that's these, right? Yeah, these are actually like an industry standard gel. They each have a number. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the website and you can actually, I think they even have an app that you can use. It's pretty cool. So okay. you could, uh, you know, look you at what the different gels are used for. And, you know, when you hover your mouse over these different color gels, it'll actually give you suggestions of oh, cool. you know, what kind of scenarios you might want to use the gel for. So you see we've got like a minus green, quarter minus green gel. This is a very mm -hmm. light magenta to reduce screen cast. Right. Um, with our soft box that we have up here uh, that has a yellow mm -hmm. uh, bias, we might actually want to use what's known as a CTB, it's, which is a, a blue gel. Okay, right. so if you have yellow, blue, and, and you know, you can also, if you're wondering, you know, which gel you need to correct for, just look at a color spectrum. So I've got an a example here of a color wheel. Mm -hmm. So this is the same color wheel that you're going to see in your vector scopes in your editing software. 
But basically, if you're, if you're biased in one direction, say towards magenta, for example, you might actually want to use a green gel. So you just push sure, sure. your gel to the other side of the visible spectrum. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, with all of this, the idea is, you know, uh, taking affordable lights and... So we can buy our dirt cheap Amazon LEDs. Uh, the only caveat is that we can't trust the color that color representation on these necessarily. Yeah, and you know, when you're buying your LED, you can mm -hmm. actually, some of them do actually list what the CRI rating of the light is. So what's what's good CRI and what's well, CR cheap Amazon CRI? Yeah, so a, a good CRI is anything over 90 is probably okay. pretty good. Um, if it doesn't list the CRI at all when you're purchasing your light, uh, you probably don't have a very good uh, balanced spectrum output. So right. this, I think this was actually rated at 95, oh, okay. um, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but you know, a lot of the more affordable LEDs, they might be 70s, mm, 60s, okay. or it might not even give you okay. a CRI rating. So, Got it. you know, when you're buying your light, look for a CRI rating. If there is no CRI rating, you can always just use gels to fix yes. it up a bit yeah. and make it a little bit better and, and, and make your shots look nicer. Another thing you talked about when we were talking about putting this whole show together, you talked about matching lights. Right. So if you have one LED that's got a yellow bias and one soft box like we have here, you know, that has a different color bias, you try to balance those out and that's where you use these gels. Exactly. Right? Okay. That's a great point too is, you know, when you have your, all of your lights are calibrated and matching, you're going to get a much better result. Cool. So. We good? Yeah. I mean, I okay. think that's, I think that's a, enough topic to cover for this week. Yeah, yeah. No, that's we we can obviously, awesome. I think yeah. we'll probably talk about lighting a lot more and there's a lot more that we can go yeah, let into. Us, send us your feedback. So we need to know what you want to hear. So please. Uh, you can email us at live at epifan.com. You can put comments in the Facebook post or the YouTube uh, uh, thread, and uh, we read them. So please send us your stuff. So that's about it. Uh, we have another, we'll be back here next week, of course. Uh, week number nine, what's it called? Oh, yes, 4K punch out. Yes, we'll be talking next week about how to take a big, wide 4K shot and crop 1080p frames out cool. of it. Yeah. So it's going to be a really cool topic. So make sure to tune in. Same time every week, Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Great. See you. Bye.